Welcome to the Kicking Up Dust Media Channel. Um, today we've got a podcast with James. Uh, James worked on um, as a trainee cameraman. Camera trainee. As a camera trainee on the Blue Story movie, which many of us have watched. But before we get to that part, we're going to start from the beginning of his life and how he got there. And before I start, this is another example of going from a negative place into a positive place. Um, welcome to the show, man. Thank you for having me, man. What's going on? Long time. Good, good, good. I'm there, my guy. I'm I ain't seen man. you for a minute, man. I'm there, my bro. Trying to survive, man. That's good, yeah. man. In the right way. Yeah, definitely, man. Positive. Mm. Um, I want to start with um, your background. Where's your parents from? Um, well, my dad's from South America, Guyana. Okay. Um, and my mom's English. Obviously, mixed race, yeah? Yeah. Cool. And where did you grow up? South America. Um, I moved there when I was about seven. I live with my grandparents. Oh, you were born in South America? No, I was born in England. Yeah. But I left at seven years old to go to Guyana. Okay, um, okay. I went primary school and secondary school out there. Oh, so you went primary and secondary school out there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what was it like? Um, It was good, man. Education-wise, yeah. I think it's a it's hundred times better than, than England, to be honest with you. Seriously? Yeah, yeah. Because what we hear about South America is a lot of the, you know, the drugs and the madness and whatever. Yeah, what? yeah. Obviously, as a kid, you don't really see that side of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying to you, but in school and stuff, like, yeah, the the, the educational side of stuff is 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 ten ten, man. You can't really fault it, man. Seriously, kids come out of top grades, doctors, and all this thing, man. Trust wow. me. Wow. And what age did you come over here? Um, I came back when I was sixteen, fifteen, sixteen. Oh wow! I think I had two more years in secondary. So you like kind of like have a memories from. Out there, yeah, 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 yeah. My whole my, my whole life has basically been out there, yeah. um, apart from obviously the adult side of me. You get me. And when you came over from back back home from there, where did you settle down in the UK? Um, I was in South East London, South Forest e Forest Hill, yeah. That's next to Lewisham, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and what was it like growing up around there? Different. Cause mm. Obviously, I didn't I didn't see none of that stuff in 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 Guyana. Um, in Guyana going to school and stuff, we didn't see bullies, there weren't fights. I think the most, the most someone, if someone was bunking in, in, in Guyana, they was basically going to the local shop that's like two roads down and they was coming back. Mm. When I came to England now, like you see people smoking, you see fights, you're seeing man hugging up girls and you're seeing man bunking for real. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You went man bunking for real, I mean like, yeah, man's it. leaving school, man ain't coming back for the rest of the day, do you know what I'm saying to you? Uh, so yeah, it, w it was it was definitely different on on the school side of stuff. And when you came over back back over here, did you have an accent or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how, how was that like in London? Well, ba basically, when I went to a school, I went to a school called Mallory in South London. It was it was in Downham near Bromley. Um, and when I went to that school, the, the school was kind of like, you know, when I don't know. Obviously, a lot of people know, but basically, when you go to a different country and you need to get into a school, you haven't got like. 10 schools even though there's like 20 schools you haven't got 10 schools yeah, to yeah. pick from you've got a list of like three that are taking mm. in people now so my school was kind of like full of like kosovans and africans it was just like just a scatter of bare different people so my school was kind of like there was a lot of naughty kids in my school okay. you know what i'm saying but when i actually got there obviously because of my accent my first friends were like girls because okay. they just loved the way i spoke you know yeah, yeah. so obviously yeah like getting into having friends in school is like my first friends were actually girls that and then obviously get in with the other crowd afterwards you get me because obviously when you came over it must have been in the middle of the school term yeah yeah so yeah, you can't yeah. choose where you want to go no, you, where no. they put you basically right? exactly that yeah literally oh, okay I had, I had a choice of two schools either that one or king's kingsdale i think it was called and that school was a mad thing walking there because you're going to visit it before you go there innit? yeah that 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 school scared the shit out why, of me, why? Oh, cause it was just so dark and dim like it was just like yeah it was it was a bit it was a bit mad man like Mali was bright, like it was like white walls and that. Okay. But like this other school was like like dark green and whatever it was, it was just everything was just dark about it, man. It was like, nah, I don't think I want to be going there, man. So you know, you said in like in Guyana, yeah, the schools were like different, like you know, respect and things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you got to in school in South London, what did you see? Like, what was it like? Yeah, it was a bit political, man. Obviously, I know there was there was one there was one person obviously in my class year. She's 
just bad up the teachers, man. I used to just look at her with my mouth open, like, wow. Like, if that happened in Guyana, man, she would have been there getting lashes, man. Do you know what I'm mm. saying? But yeah, they're just cussing the teachers and just walking out when they want to walk out. Like, they're meant to be in class, but they're outside in the playground. It was, yeah, it was a bit mad, man. I, I, was, I, was, I was just like, I don't know. I think I was all over the place at that time. I didn't understand what was going on. And after you finished, I'm assuming that was until 16 GCSEs, right? Yeah, 16 GCSEs, yeah. And obviously when I'd done my GCSEs, yeah. What did you do after that? Um, my dad had a motorbike shop. So I was working at a motorbike shop um, with my dad for a little while. Mm. And then obviously I ran away from home. Why? Um, yeah, he weren't really playing his role, man. He was kind of like... Yeah, he weren't never there, basically, innit? So I felt that the streets was more exciting for me, innit? So, oh, so I wanted to run away one day. I ran away for like two days and I tried to come back and he was like, nah, Bridget. <laughs> yeah, he was like, nah. So what did you you weren't having it. Obviously, like every night, innit? For about, I think for about two weeks, man. Obviously, my little brother still lived there, innit? Yeah. Um, so I would sneak in and climb through the window. My little brother would open and let me in. If my dad came into the room, I'd go underneath the beds because it was bunk beds and that. Um, every time you catch me, you tell me to get out, man. Trust me. Seriously. Lucky for me, it was always the morning, though. It was never the night time. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay, you? But okay. I went on for like two weeks, man. And then, like, yeah, you just locked the windows properly. Like, told my brother if he lets me in, like, I don't know what would happen, but yeah. So, what did you do? I was just on the roads, man. Um, I was. This is a true story. I'm not, no cappy. My friend would verify this shit. Obviously, my friend Raza, like, my close friend, that I, obviously, when I first came over, like, we was close friends together. Um, and obviously, his mum was so cool, man. Like, his mum mm. was so cool. Like, she always used to, like, let man chill and What's give man dinner. If you don't mind me asking. Like, he's Jamaican. Okay. Yeah, no, but he's not Jamaican. He's English, but his, his mum's Jamaican. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, every time I, I went there, like, she would give man food, let man chill. She'd be like, yeah, do you want to ring your dad? I'll chat to him for you. I'm like, nah, 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 nah. But obviously, all this now. But she used to let man stay. But, you know what? After a while, it got to that point where, you know when someone's getting annoyed like you're, you're, you're there for a little yeah, bit yeah, too yeah. long you know what I'm saying? Like burden, yeah but mm. I, I felt that mm. i don't think she wanted to show man that but i kind of felt that in it so every now and again like if i could stay out of the house i wouldn't go there you know what i'm trying mm. to say to you but at the bottom of this because he lived in like a flats um and at the bottom of his flats there was like a cupboard yeah so basically what i used to do we used to, I used to chill with him probably until like 10 11 o'clock at night he'll go upstairs I'll go outside, chill with another group of people that used to come out at that time. That's their time to chill. Yeah, for like two, about four o'clock in the morning. Then I'll come back to his cupboard and just chill there until the morning and then go upstairs Damn. and knock for him. That's some yeah, like man. unstability right there, right? Crazy, man. Crazy. So, so like, obviously living like that on the roads in South London, what did that lead to? Or did you start like getting involved in crime and things like that? Yeah, stretch. You know, yeah, from 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 when I was on the roads. Anyway, I was already doing phone robberies. Phone. That was yeah, a, yeah. That was the era of like street robberies back yeah, in the day. Yeah, yeah, street robbery. It was, it was more like bags. Yeah, bags and phones, man. Like yeah, hundred yeah, yeah. percent. That like, was like what late nineties, early two thousands. Mm, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. the era of like street robberies. And did you ever get caught? Saying that, yeah, I remember one time um, we used to go. We used to go Brighton a lot um, to go and do robberies and stuff. Mm. And we went, we went Brighton one time, and um, and what we used to do, there used to be like about four or five of us. I think at this time there was four of us, two guys that weren't really on it, but then me and my Cody that were like, yeah. we done this all the time. Do you know what I'm saying? I say to you. Um, so we went Brighton one time. We was taking people's phones, taking this, taking that shit, taking taking whatever. And then there was a group of um, a boys, like four boys or five boys, I can't remember. So we've gone up to them, we've took their stuff now. But as we've took their stuff and we've walked off with their stuff now. Um, that the police have gone past. And as the police have gone past, they've obviously gone to the police and been like, right, those boys have just robbed us. Yeah, so Brighton. the police have turned around. As the police have turned around, we started running. There was no way on planet Earth these police could have catched, man. Yeah. No, we was too gone. Yeah. But the guys that we robbed, for the sake of the police, like, and they just got the, the power and the mighty... <laughs> They started chasing man down, bro. No. They chased man down so much, yeah. They caught man up. One of them fly kicked me into my shoulder, yeah. And like obviously he put like took me off got like so I was just dropped. Yeah. Police just jumped on top of me and grabbed me and nicked me. I had about six phones with me, bro. So you had the police chasing you and the guys you just robbed. Yeah, but the police were nowhere to be seen. Like we already oh, gone past okay, them already. Okay, okay. If it weren't for these guys that we robbed, yeah. You'd have got away. We would have got away clean. Did you get arrested? Yeah, we got arrested. And what happened? Um 
they told me that they was going to remind me or something like that. And I faked a faint in, 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 in the interview. Like, I act like I fainted and that. And they're like, he's fainted, he's fainted. They tried to pick me up. I'll be real. That day was, I don't know what's happened with that charge, mm. my bro. Yeah, you, they build you? they build man out and just left man go. How like, old are you? Probably like 17, 18. Yeah, them days are a bit different. The guy don't turn up to write a statement that he's dropped the yeah, charges back probably, then. Yeah, probably yeah. But what? I was shook. But I never went Brighton again for a hot minute. Where? What was the age you first time you went to prison? Um, just before my eldest daughter was born. So I think about eighteen, coming up nineteen. Where did you go? Felton. What was that like? Like it was crazy, man. How? It's just that everyone's obviously me and you know how. Yeah. But explain Felton was like just for the viewers, Felton was known to be crazy back especially back why, then. Why or why in it? Young you, offender. He was a youth offender, so was, what was it eighteen to twenty one or sixteen I, to twenty one? I think it was at that age, yeah, to twenty ones yeah. I think it was, yeah. It, it was known it. it was known to be a a very wild prison, isn't it? Mm. So what what, you, what things you saw in there? Um now, now Felton was crazy only because it's that f so fast pace in it, and mm -hmm. everything's like, how can I put it? Everyone's got a point to prove, man. Mm -hmm. In Felton, is like, there's not a lot of quiet people. And when they're quiet, they're really pr proving their point, basically. You know what I'm trying to say yeah, to you? It's kind yeah. of like, like, everyone has to prove their point in Felton, man, or you, you will be victimized, basically. Mm -hmm. When you went there, did you know people there? No. Nah. So it's just you, you by yourself? Yeah, but. I've said this a lot of times. I'm that kind of outgoing person. I'm. I don't come across bad, and I'm not a pussy. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. if you hit me, I'm gonna hit you back. Like, I'm trying to yeah, say yeah. to you so, and I don't come across like I, I don't like bullies. I've never yeah. been bullied, but I don't like bullies. I just don't like the way it, I don't like the way it looks. It's just yeah, not yeah. right, and I don't. I, yeah, I'm trying. So, when I was in jail, it was kind of like my character just gets along with anyone anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to say to you like so. Yeah, I, I, I never, I never had issues in Feltham. I didn't even have a fight in Feltham. Um, I remember, you know, outside the cells. Have you ever, have you been Felton? I know. I went Reading Wire Okay. I went, In out, outside Felton um, cells, yeah, they've got like little boxes, they, yeah. like electrical boxes, and these boxes, obviously, if you're on basic or not basic, they turn off this this the key, so no TV. You can yeah. have your TV in the cell, but they'll turn off the electric outside. Yeah. So basically, what happened was, obviously, you get get in the wrong crowd in prison. You're young. You, you want to stay with the strongest lot, and you're not going to mm. try and go for the second strongest. Of course, like, yeah, I'm trying to say to you, so the strongest lot were going in around, and they were mashing up the people's boxes and then rolling that. I'm trying to say to <laughs> you, so locking off man's electric and that. So that's that's the kind of shit we was doing in Felton, man. Rochester was was way better than Felton, though. Yeah, Rochester was more calmer, right? Yeah, I don't think it's a why. I'm not sure if it's a why or why. I'm not sure. I can't remember. That was a long time, like twenty yeah, years ago. I can't you, remember. You get like. In Feltham is that there's a bit not Feltham, so in Rochester you've got like a big open ground, man. So you come like it's just so big. You don't even feel like you're in prison for a second. You feel like you're just working. How That's often? Crazy. How often the bell go off there? In where? In Feltham. In the fighting bell. bell. Yeah, the fighting bell. Yeah, yeah. that's that's consistent. That was a regular thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That f fight, fights, as I said in it, all someone's always proving a point mm. in it, and they can't. Put it this way, everyone wants to be the bad man on the wing. wing yeah, there has exactly. to be someone that everyone's like, oh, yeah, that's that's my man. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm trying to say to you that. Like, but in Feltham, there ain't that. There ain't that, I know exactly, yeah. That's, that's only because you can't stand that tool for too long. Like, there's always someone coming in that knows someone else in there. Like, it just yeah. always gets political. So you're better off just, like I'm saying to you, not even trying to be on that level in jail in Feltham. It in, was crazy. In prisons like that, the bell goes off sometimes more than once in one day. Sometimes two, mm. three times. What that means is basically like when there's a fight kicks off something, the prison officers, they hit the bell. And once they hit the bell, everyone goes in the cells and everyone yeah, locks down. down. And that happens in most prisons, but especially in, in youth offenders like that, that could sometimes happen a few times in one day. Yeah. And basically spend the whole day on lockdown, isn't it? Literally, basically, because of the fight. Um, how, um, what, how old were you when you got out of there? Um, in, Fel in Feltham, I think I went from Feltham and then they transferred me to Rochester. Mm. Um, and I've done that a couple times, but I think the longest stretch I've done was at like eight months. I eight never months done like mad time, man. Basically, yeah. I was in, I was in Feltham, and a few of my friends was coming up to Reading, um, but they was coming up like just linking girls and that, like, just chilling and whatnot. Um, there was other guys up here from the ends doing their thing, but it was kind of like. Like obviously on the ends, there's the money man, there's the robbers, yeah. there's the man that just chill on the ends and just wait for the man to come back and smoke their shit yeah, and yeah. spend their money. Like there's 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 certain types of people in it. 
I've never, I was never on the shot inside of life. Yeah. It? Like, apart from obviously when I got into it, but I was always the robber. I started off as the robber in it. Yeah. So when I came to Reading, I came to Reading as a chill vibe. Like, do you know what I'm mm. saying to you? I, I didn't really shit on my own doorstep and be robbing man around, man. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying yeah. to you? So I didn't, I didn't come to Reading to rob. It was yeah. a chilling for girls, whatever, do you know what I'm trying to say to you? But once we got here, now obviously we went to one house to get weed and that, and no one can get weed. Like, no one's, no, no dealer's got weed, innit? Yeah. So me and my boy just went out, thought, let's just go and try and find something, you get me? And then we bumped into these guys from the ends that were shot in. From your ago, ends? From my ends, so yeah, basically, from South London. So they were down here doing county lines, basically? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. Well, they hard were, and both or, or just weed? At that time, I won't be able to tell you, you know? Okay. I, like, I, I didn't really go into depth with, I didn't really watch it like that, to yeah, be honest okay, with you. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I wanted weed. They had a Z them format, yeah, yeah. so they could have been doing weed. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, like, why you got that? I don't know. You know what I'm saying to you? So, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be lying if I said they was doing something else. You get me? Yeah. But they were from the ends and they were like, they were after robberies. They weren't doing robberies no more. They, they'd done they, robberies in the ends. making money. Baby. Yeah, they were making money. So they must have been, you know what I'm trying to yeah, say to course, you, but yeah. I, I, won't, I won't be able to say, you get me? Yeah. So obviously that's when we got the green off of them, went back and then, yeah, we just started selling green from there, man. And w did you like continue doing that? Yeah, yeah, I've done, I done, it, I done it for a little while, man. And obviously... Obviously, I used to, I used to be doing some bits in Camden, like dib and dabble in Camden, doing a little off and on stuff down there. Do you know what I'm saying to you? So okay, so basically, so you knew about shotting, basically. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, so when you came out of prison, so before, sorry, but when I went, but when I went Camden, I, I, I didn't. I, it wasn't something that I wanted to do. It was something like, Rom, I can make this much in what this much time. Like, oh, let, cool, okay. let me go and make that money and cut. You know what I'm saying to you? I never thought, Rom, like, man's gonna carry this on after. Like, man's gonna go and read. You know what I'm saying to you? It was yeah. never that. And um. And then you went back to prison again. Yeah, bully. You went I, went, I went bully a few times still. But, that, but so when you went back to bully, that's when I saw you for the first time, right? In Bullendon. Now when I went, now when I went bully the first time, yeah, I didn't. I didn't see you. It was the second time I went bully. Okay, it was the second time in yeah, Bullendon. Well, yeah, yeah. When your yeah, when your bro was in there. Oh yeah, that you. I think yeah, you was there, and my brother was there, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, cause I, um. When you were left the road, you were shot in on the roads, basically. Yeah, 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 went, yeah. When I when I was yeah, by the time I went bully up here, I was on the roads. Yeah. So what was it like in bully, in Bullingdon? Our bully was cool. bully weren't like jail though, man. It's an adult prison, isn't it? Yeah, but it weren't like jail. Though. I didn't, I didn't like mm. every. It's like when you go bully, it's like everyone from Redden. So when you're in Redden, if you don't see a face for a little while, like you think raw, like where's this brother gone or where's that person gone? As soon as you go bully, they're all in there. You're like, yeah. rah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying to you? Even people that you didn't even know went jail, they're there. It's you know like ends, in it, basically? Literally. So that, it weren't like I went prison when I was in Bully. Like, until you're in your cell, obviously, you know what I'm saying? But apart from that, man, it was just like, you're, you're in the ends, yeah, literally. Because, because by that time, you'd been here for a little while, so you knew yeah. a lot of people, wasn't it? Yeah, I knew a lot of people. Yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah. That, was, that was also the case um, for me. Like, you would go to prison sometimes, and you would buck up on certain men you ain't seen for, like, time. you buck up in, inside prison jail, with yeah. them. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, um, it's another neighborhood sort of thing. It is like another world, 100%. I uh, know, 100%, isn't it? Yeah. If you don't see them outside here, you see them inside there. And how, how, how long did you spend on that time in, in Bullen? Um, I think I was in Bully for about six, seven months. Again, yeah? Yeah. I, I, I don't think I've done ever, I don't, I've never done longer than eight months in jail. So in total, like for, in total, how long have you done in Bullen, like in jail altogether? Adding it all up. Six times I've been in jail. Six times? Yeah. So what in total roughly if you put a number on it? Probably like two and a half, three years. Two and a half, three years? So yeah, that's a yeah. little time still when you add it all up. Yeah, when you add it all together, yes. 100%. I've got, I've got bare memories from jail, man. So there must have been a lot of time in there, man. Yeah, of course. When you and there's a lot of things that can happen in one day, man. Yeah, exactly. I know. <laughs> Especially when you're in prison, you're not doing that in all day. Just Trust know what me. I mean. So like in total, like three years of your life, two and a half, three years, mm. a long time, man. Yeah. Some nah, guys go long, once man. or twice for a month here and there and it don't really mean much. Mm. But when you add them, all them sentences up. Yeah, it is a long time. It's a long time, man. You know? I didn't learn nothing from it, man. Well, nothing. Three years worth of nothing, man. What's the maddest thing you ever saw in jail? Uh, kettle. The, ke the kettle boiled, man. Um, oh, someone got burnt with it? Yeah, man. So basically... Yeah, so basically, basically, what happened was this: is like, what prison was that? 
This was in Bully. In Bully, yeah. Yeah. What happened? A wing, bro. Well, a wing, not B wing. I never R- been. Roman wing, wing, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah I've never yeah. been on A wing. It was B yeah. wing, yeah. Um, B two, where. But anyway, yeah. Um, obviously you've got the people that come in with the with the grub, like don't, they go on their visits. You got there's always you've always got like two or three people on the, on the spur that get parcels in. Jump yeah, yeah. So, so freeze a bit of a stretch, but like definitely two hundred percent. You got a couple of people that always get signed in. So basically, obviously, one of these guys was meant to hook someone else up with something, innit? Yeah. Um, and where he didn't hook the person up with the thing, like obviously, the person took the whole package off of him. You get me? Also, oh, basically robbed him. Basically, yeah. Basically robbed him, fam. That like, it was so peak, fam, because like this brother was cool. You get me? But yeah. it was like two days prior to this. Now I kind of had like a altercation with one brother. And I thought like, at this time, when you have an altercation with a person in jail, when it, when it kicks off, like, you know who's got your back then mm, in it. Do you know what I'm trying to say to you? Yeah. So who, whoever ain't got your back then, you know for the next time, like, they ain't really got your back. back yeah. So when this altercation was happening, I got jumped on. Two of my guys jumped in, bracked up the brother. I jumped up, bracked up the brother. And then the other person didn't do nothing. Do you know what I'm trying to say yeah. to you? So going fast forward to his situation now, I didn't feel like I should have. Do you know what I'm trying yeah, to say oh, to yeah, you? Like, yeah, yeah. I, I, f- I felt like if something happens now, I, I was fast forwarding it. I was thinking if, if I go and back him and help him out and something happens, yeah. like, I can't justify it. This and you don't was know back- him from road, right? No, I didn't know okay, him from road. Okay. No, nah, he was from jail. So what happened to him? Yeah, so basically, obviously, like, the man got um, a spoon in it and got him to bend over and, like, said, yeah, like, pop that out in it. So obviously, they've. It's, they've it's, yeah. Just, stop you. Just, <laughs> just for the viewers who don't understand what he just said. So basically someone had drugs inside him internally and some other prisoners went inside him with a spoon mm. to take the drugs out. Yeah. Go on, carry on. Yeah, so obviously they're, they're trying to get the, the stuff out. But as they're trying to do that, I don't know if, whether it was inside or outside they got into him or whatever, but obviously he just shouted, basically it's in my tobacco pouch. So obviously mm. they've stopped what they're doing, opened his, his tobacco pouch and obviously... The big lump of hash was in there, you get me? So It was just hash? It was just hash, man. Oh, my it, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I don't even think it was a half or not. I think it was more of like a Q and an eight. Or, I don't even know where it was. It was not nothing major, like, you will go ham over. Yeah. Yeah. And that, one of the brothers in there, one of the brothers that was robbing him was a nitty. Like, nitty's in jail from Redding in Bully. Like, it's, like, it's, it's like, yeah. They'll put in work. They do put in work, man. 100%. So, so what happened then? How did, how, how did it get from there to man getting... Yeah, so obviously, obviously, yeah. So where they, so where they've robbed him, obviously, he's gone back to his cell. But the guards weren't notified, so the guards didn't know nothing about what's just happened. This was inside his cell. The man took him in his cell, put him on his bed, done what they'd done, and they come out. Yeah. And obviously, the guards didn't know nothing about this, and it. So obviously, he was pissed. He was pissed that. So he stayed in his cell for the rest of that day. Yeah. The next day, morning, come out. Um, I've come out. I've come out of my cell. And I've, and I've got, like, my boy over the road, like, over the... I say over the road, but obviously over the banister. Like, the cell's over there. Like yeah. my, that's my, my cold D. Not, not my cold D, but he was my boy boy in jail, yeah. in jail. You get me? So every time I come out, I'll be like, I'll shout him to make sure he comes out. Yeah. But as he came out now, his next door neighbour is the guy that... One of the nitties that robbed my man. You yeah. get me? So my eyes were over that way, looking at my bread yeah. And obviously my man was already in the picture. You get me? So obviously I've seen that you run up the stairs... And chased my man into his cell and just dashed it in his face. You get me? Um, yeah, and nah, he was just he was screaming for for a hot minute, man. Did it connect good. That his whole face was written off. That like, it was gone. Wow. Did he put sugar in it? Yeah. Ooh. It was gone. It was gone. It was gone. So I, obviously, after this, the the, the, the thing's gone in. The, the screws are gone in. I didn't really see nothing else after that. And of his face, do you know what I'm saying to you? But wow. Did it bring it back now? No, no. So that's basically um, boiling hot water mixed with sugar. To make it stick, so it stick to your face. I, that's happened to someone in youth offenders when I was there as well. Um, that's a nasty way to catch someone, man. Horrible, man. I think that's worse than worse than chopping someone. Yeah, that, that's that's a nasty way. Yeah, yeah. skin graft. To, on, I don't even think skin graft can help that, man. But I remember one situation that um, that them two brothers were there. Your brother was there. His Cody was there. There was a lot of people from the ends on the wing, mm. and I remember one time um. There was one one government, but um, 
he used to try it with everyone, man. Like, you know, oh, like. The red face. Huh? He had a, like a really red face. My guy. Bro, <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, I remember him. Yeah, bro, yeah. listen to this now. I'm going to tell you, like, listen to this anyway now. Obviously, he used to try it with, man, all the time, bro. Like, consistently try it with, man. Like, but, like, one day I just had way too much with him, bro. Yeah. And, like, you know, when they put you in the cell and they come in and they close it. Obviously, I've stopped the door as he's closing it and he stepped in and said, what you're doing? But I've banged him. But as I've banged him, he's dropped forward towards me now, yeah? And like straight away, I'm thinking, fuck, what did I just do? Like, and the screw. Yeah, my oh. bro. Like literally, like what did I just do? But as I've done that now, yeah? But obviously, remember I said I, I've hit him, but he's dropped, on, like come towards me. So yeah. he's dropped on top of me. So when the other screws have seen this now, they don't know that I've hit him. They think he's, he's jumping on you. Do you know what I'm trying to say to you now? So... They've jumped on top of me as well. Twisted man up, broke me up now, yeah? And they've taken me out. They've taken me out of, of my thingy now. Edwards couldn't come back to the spur. Everyone was going mad, saying, how man twisted man up? You assaulted yeah. my He basically assaulted me first, yeah. you get me? But that wasn't the case. He didn't yeah. touch me. I hit him. him first, you get yeah. me? Um, so yeah, I went I went block. I got I got like 32 days CC, man. The worst days of my life, bro. You got 32 days CC? Yeah, so you just bro. Sit there what does CC days? mean, though? I can't even remember what that means. I just I remember, remember that. that I just remember either. that saying thirty-two CC. I put it in my bars, what, what, bro. Actually, what does that mean again? Sorry, CC was just the word for the block, isn't it? Like twenty-two days CC, yeah, or okay. thirty-two days. So I don't know what the CC means, yeah, but that's where it was. Thirty-two days in there, yeah. No, no, um, canteen and shit, man. How did you find that? I cried the first night, man. Seriously, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> oh, and, the, and the reason why man cried, yeah, is because. And this is the f this is the first time when I went um, so this is yeah this is the second time when I'm bullying it. So this is the first time I ever went to the block, bro. I didn't yeah. know what the block was. You hear about the block? Do you know what I'm yeah, trying to yeah. say to you? But like going to prison is hard. Like for anyone that's never been to prison, prison is hard, yeah. <coughs> and yeah. the the hardest part about prison is like the first forty eight hours. That mm -hmm. like when you first get there, you wake up. And then op them opening that door and you're like this, you, you've got to see who's around. Like that's the first thing you're doing. You're looking around to see who's around and who's on this thing. You know what I'm saying to you? So I think I had that exact same feeling when I went to the block. Seriously. You know what I'm saying to you? Not the same feeling when I come out looking for people because obviously you can't do that shit. You get like 23 hours bang up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying to you? But when I went there, I had the same yeah. feeling of like, I can't do nothing. But now it's even worse because there's no window. Or was there a window? I, I don't think you could, yeah, there's a window, but I think there's a, a sheet in front of it. Yes, I'm mad. It, 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 it. it wasn't like a window, and then it was no TV, and it was like, yeah, now that was mad. Yeah, yeah. I think what is when you go into the wing, there's people you communicate, it and you still kind of be normal a little bit. It helps. But you, when you go in the block, yeah, the block like, is completely, completely now you're different, now man. you're in prison. Yeah, you know? that's proper prison. Prison, block. yeah, exactly. But yeah, the block here, yeah, that the block is somewhere where you get a lot of alone time. Yeah, you, I, I've done a lot of reading, man. I realized that I can read and fall asleep, man. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah no, that's when you. That's that's the same place where I done a lot of reading in the block. So anyway, so when you came out, what did you, after all these sentences, like small, small basic sentences, when did it come to a point where you said like, right, enough's enough, I can't keep going back. I've got to sort my life out basically. Prison comes with it, man. Whatever you do, you, you can't take it out of your head. Yeah, 100%. If you're going to do something illegal, basically, yeah. Then you're always gonna have that in the back of your head. You 100%. can never, you can never be doing something illegal and think, okay, cool, I'm never gonna go back to prison. Though, no. don't make no sense. So I've always, for as long as I was doing what I was doing on the roads, I've always known that I might go back to prison. Yeah, it was just my kids that made me think raw. Like for when my kid come in there when he was at like two or three, like yeah, like, yeah, that wouldn't happen again. And even your your brother was in there as well and he gave my son a hug. I don't know how those screws that that happened, but yeah. So once you decided, boy, that's it, road's done, basically, yeah? Did it come to, like, a point where you said, like, that's it, I'm done with the road? Yeah, that went, that went, that went, that went for now, though. That was, oh, that was way later? Yeah. So moving on, so once you come out of prison way later, what was you carrying on shorting, basically? Yeah. But I didn't go to prison for, for food, remember? So yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was never a thing like, let me stop now because I've just been caught for caught, it. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I, was, yeah. I see man in jail for reloads, 70 of each, like, in jail for two, three years, like, it's like, that didn't phase me. I was getting 70 of each when I got out, like, straight away, you know what I'm saying? So what made you stop? Um, my kids, man. Seriously? Yeah, and, um, because, so, so basically, that, part of that started through the music, innit? Yeah. So where I was doing music, obviously, I was rapping about my life, innit? Never know yeah. lies, all truth. Yeah, yeah. So, where I rapped about that, I got to a certain 
stage in my life where I was like, my son's getting older and I can't let him hear. Like, that was my life. I'm I'm not proud of it, but it happened. Happily, you know what I'm saying to you? But you can't change it. Yeah, I don't want him hearing music now and being like, right, that's how my dad was. And you know I'm saying to you, thinking that it was okay. The like, good thing, yeah. You know what I'm trying to say to you? So that, that that's where my transition <laughs> basically started, isn't it? So I kind of slowed down with the music and crossed over to the to the movies. And how long ago was that roughly? Three years ago, four years ago. Three years ago. Like what, like, it's not like everyone just wake, anyone just wakes up and says, yeah, I'm gonna make a movie. Mm. How did it happen? Like what gave you the idea? Like how did you go about it? All right, so basically what happened was, um, when I was doing my music, the concepts in my, in my music videos always had like a movie type to it. So there was always something happening, whether it was, me running away from the police, sure. or me giving a parcel to somebody. There was always some part of movie in my in my music videos. Mm. And the person that I worked with, Simon Oaks, obviously he was kind of getting into the video thing now. So it's kind of like, so where he was doing his camera stuff and I was kind of doing that, we kind of emerged together basically, innit? Yeah. and kind of like, I just said to him, let's just make a, a series, basically. Okay. He's never, he never, he made a little projects before, but nothing as big as a series, basically. But we okay. both didn't know how big it was until we'd done it. And that's yeah. when I made my first project signed. That's what you made, that's, for, what, what was that? Explain to the viewers what that was. What signed? Yeah. Um, signed was basically a, a, a seven part series that was hosted on Link Up TV, um, starring myself about a guy and his journey to getting signed to the music industry. Okay, seven parts. You're still on there now? It's still on there now. Yeah, Link Up TV. How many views is it on? Um, I think the first one's on 80K. 80K, but it's yeah. seven parts, right? Yeah, seven parts, yeah. And then that was, the, how how long was each part? About 35 minutes long. About 35 minutes yeah, long. 20, so it was quite a bit of a project then, right? Yeah, 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 definitely. So you continued doing this. How many, like, so you done that. What was next? What was the next project after that? Um, after signed, it was um, Chance the Movie, the anti-knife crime movie. That's the one with the over a million views, right? That's the one over a million views. With yeah. Over a million views. We won best short film as well, and it was featured on ITV News and Channel Five News. Yeah, and that was you and Sam, yeah? Or was that just you? No, nah, Simon wasn't a part of that. That was just you, right? Yeah, that was my project, written and directed by me. Yeah. So that got you. So you got the best, best short film twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen, right? Yeah. Wow. So once you done that, then you made a film with Dave Courtney, right? After Chance the movie, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's when. The, so that's the one the I watched. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the one yeah. I watched. How did that happen? Like how you know when I watched, it, I was like, how did that happen? Like you, Dave Courtney, how did that come about? Um, so basically, what happened? Obviously, the movie came about basically when I was doing Chance. I said that I want to showcase my daughter because my daughter was in a couple of projects. Um, she was seven at the time, I think, and I said that I want to make her a main character in, in, in a movie, basically. Yeah. Um, so obviously that's where I came up with the takeover about the two little girls where their parents yeah, basically cool. get taken out and obviously they come back for the takeover, basically. Um, so that's the reason I made that film. Um, where Dave Courtney came into it now is obviously, he does part, he's got, he hosts parties at his house. He's got okay. like, his house is like, he calls it Camelot. Okay. And basically like he's got his house and then he's got like, at the back of his house, it's like it's like a it's like a club. Seriously, yeah, there's no other word for it, but it's it's a club. club. So it's like a massive open space, obviously sheltered and whatnot. It's not even an open space. It's it's, it's another part of his house. It's like another extension, basically. Yeah. But he he hosts parties and stuff in there. Um, so one of my little brothers, obviously, like he's got friends and stuff that go to the parties and they chill, blah blah. So my brother actually knew Dave Courtney. Okay. Um, so one day my brother took me to the party and I, and, I, and I was there and I was like, this brother's a geezer, man. Mm, yeah, like, proper. A proper geezer, you get me? So I was like, I said to my brother, like, like line it up in it. So I went there one time, started chatting to him. They're smoking, there for hours, just chatting to Dave, like. And then, yeah, got, in the, got him in the movie, man. And I think he's done a bit of acting before in the past, right? He's done a few few things before, man. Yeah, yeah man, yeah, he's so nice, yeah, man. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. And that movie, how long did it take to shoot? The whole the, thing, A to Z. The takeover, I think, took like seven days, eight days, seven is that days. It? Yeah, wow, so all of Dave Courtney's scenes was in his house. Oh, the whole thing was in he, his house. Yeah, so basically, we went once. So, 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 just say on Tuesday, we've got Dave Courtney Day. We went to Dave Courtney's house in the morning, 
and just filmed all day in his house. Okay, so is that how you do it? Like, each, okay. By location. I never knew that, yeah. I never yeah, knew yeah, that. yeah. We, that's the easier way to do it because yeah. if you used to do it by scene, just say that for a prison, that like you've got like, in a movie, you've got like 13 scenes in a prison, but they're all scattered. Yeah. You're not gonna film. Keep to going back here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a mad thing. Prisons right. are like sixteen hundred pounds, seventeen hundred pounds to, to to rent out. Do you know what I'm saying? A so, day, yeah. yeah. So you have to get that straight. All them scenes out, man. So just to ask you one question: So the prisons they rent out are the actual like prisons that are actually prisons right now, or they were prisons, the closed down prisons. Um. So they, they, they. So what prisons do? Yeah. Certain prisons, not obviously all prisons. I don't know if Bullying Bullin would ever do it, but certain prisons have got like. They've got wings in it. So basically, how can I explain it, man? So basically, um, the, the prisons that we use, yeah, it was in Shrewsbury. Okay. Now, that one was closed down. And yeah. I think it was for child abusers. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what that prison was for. So I think that's, that's closed down. But there weren't, there weren't no prisons or anything around. I think the whole prison was closed down at the time. But then there's one in Gloucestershire that you can use. And I think there's part of the prison that's still open. Oh, wow. So you can actually go rent like a wing out, basically. Yeah, just like the hospital that we use. When we use the hospital, is the 13th floor is the, is the empty floor where we can film. Oh. But every floor downwards is, is patience, bro. And you got to pay them, basically, to use it. Yeah, you got to pay them to okay. do that. Yeah, yeah, big money, man. They, they, they want big money in them places, man. And that film's on, like, nearly a million views now, I Which think? Which one's that? The Takeover? Takeover, yeah. yeah. Takeover's nearly on 800,000. 800,000. Yeah. How did you end up working on working with the guys on Blue Story? How did that happen? Um, okay, so basically, the reason Blue Story happened yeah. is because Ratman actually made a three-part sequel. It's three-part sequel, three-part series, basically, called Shiro Story. Yeah, I saw it, yeah. Um, and in Shiro Story, there was only a handful of us that was there with him every day. Mm. Um, so you were the Ratman every day on Shiro Story, yeah? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Me, ca me, me, Cameron... Me, Cameron. Me, the cameraman, Simon Oaks. Yeah. David McKeish, the sound guy. And David Witchell, the lighting guy. Okay. Before I big them out this time, you get me? But obviously, yo, those those were the guys that were with us all day. Obviously, a couple of producers here and there. But there, were, there weren't a lot of people on set doing Shiro's stories. So mm. It was just us, basically. Yeah. Um, and then we done one, two, and three. Um, I think each one of them lasts about three days to film. Yeah. Might have been longer. I'm not sure. But I think it was about three days to film. Um, so due to that, basically, we got into Blue Story. Okay, so that kind of that was the reason why Blue Story basically happened. Yeah, so part three came out, yeah, and it, and it blew up basically. And how long did Blue Story take to shoot A to Z? I think we was there for six weeks. Six weeks, yeah. yeah. Where, where was it shot? Um, most of it was shot in my ends. Yeah, but all the violent scenes we had to go to Enfield. Okay. Lucian Burroughs said no. Oh, because you get permission from the council to shoot yeah. certain scenes. Yeah, yeah I heard about yeah, but that. But Enfield still. say, "Yeah, come ahead. You can do it here if you want." So we shot that in oh. Enfield. So what? So what I do with my movies? I don't just make the movies for the sake of making the movies. There's there's a couple of elements that I aim to do. Um, for instance, the young actors. I, I make sure that I get young actors in that because obviously when I was younger, I didn't have people around me saying, "Oh." Go and do acting, go and do rapping. Go and there wasn't none of that. It was the OT thing and go and mm, do this there yeah. and go and do... I'm trying to say to you, so... That's always what it's like. I, 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 I try to break that cycle myself. Mm. And anytime I've got a youngster around me, 11, 12, 13, 14 years old, I make sure I tell them, you sh message me, I'll get you my movie. And without a doubt, without a doubt, nobody can ever say I haven't. Without a doubt, I'll get you in a movie. Whether it's you're doing nothing or something, you're, you're going to be in a movie. And I'll make sure that you're going to be in another... You know I'm trying to say to you, I'll make yeah. sure I just bring the youngsters forward, man, and give them that opportunity, you know? So that's one of the main things that I do movies for. Does opportunity. It, does it surprise you that how many roadmen could actually act? So no, nah, because you see where, see where it is. The movies that I do, yeah? Like, most of the movies that I do is kind of like what's either happened or I've seen. Do you know what mm. I'm saying to you? Either happened to me or I've seen. Um, and for a road man to play them roles is not acting. I don't know. You see, making a, a movie to making a seven-part series. Yeah. Is it the same sort of... That's a question I was always wondering about. Yeah, so my first project was a series. 
Mm. And that was a big mistake. Well, not a big mistake. It was like, I, should, I shouldn't have done a, a series first. I should have done a movie, movie first. Yeah. I thought personally, because obviously I didn't know nothing about it, I thought the series would have been a lot easier. Simon thought that too. Mm. So when we jumped into it, like it got a bit like, it was a bit long now. Long, yeah. Yeah, do you know what I'm trying to say to you? But we still carried on and we and we done it. What was I saying to you? That's what I was saying to you. Remember, me and my man were talking about it. Mm. So I was like, nah, I feel like making a, a movie, a short movie first, yeah. is better than make, because at least you get to the end of the story, innit? Yeah, now sh- sh- short films, not, not short films, sorry, um, the series, it's a lot of it's a lot of work because you got to think about it like this yeah one series yeah like, okay cool for instance a movie's got to have a beginning a belly and an end, end yeah that's the way I see it mm. and they've all got to be something's happening something's got to be exciting there at the beginning yeah. so it entices people to watch it yeah. and you don't want them to get halfway through and get bored so exactly. you have to bring something exciting again and then there's always got to end on something exactly. fancy at the end I'm trying to say to you so with that concept or that template taking that to a a series now, just think about it, seven episodes. Mm. You've got beginning, middle, end. Beginning, middle, end. Keep Begin- finding something, yeah, yeah, yeah. So how many banging yeah, yeah, parts yeah, yeah. can you find? Do you know what I'm trying to say yeah, to you? Yeah. That's where the difficult part came in, do you know what I'm saying to you? Keeping people wanting Engaged. to watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I know, I noticed with a lot of um people that do these like, you know, the first episode will get the most views. Yeah, it would, always. And the second one, it'll kind of die down slowly. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Mm. But you're right, yeah. I th- I the think same with, that's the same with mine as well. Obviously, my highest one is nearly 80K and the lowest one I think is on like, the one on my channel, the last one I put on my channel is 11K. Mm. You know what I'm saying and to all, you? There's obviously the, the danger of man running out of money as well. Yeah. Because well, we, 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 did, we didn't have a mad budget on, this, on sign though. Okay. We don't have no budget. Do some actors act for free? You got to pay everyone. Actors act for free. So basically, so I say actors act for free. Everyone's different, isn't it? Mm. So some people with no catalogue of work will be like, can I come to your audition? Yes, you can come. How much am I getting paid? It's like, my G, you, you're not even in a freaking movie. What are mm. you bringing to the table? table I yeah. can't pay somebody for something that's not benefiting the movie. That makes no sense. Do you know what so, I'm trying to say? So to what you? would be the purpose of being in the movie then? Like for their exposure or the experience or? So what? Yeah, for their experience. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm bringing you on for your experience and of exposure for yourself. So, so now you've got more show rule to go out there. Okay, do you know what I'm saying to yeah. you? At a certain level, if you're bringing something to a movie, then by all rights, you're entitled to either what you want getting paid or travel. Do you know what I'm trying to say to you? Like I wouldn't ever tell someone that I'm not going to pay you. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. If you're not bringing nothing to the movie, then it's not. I don't see why I should be paying. Do you know what I'm trying to say to you? If I've got a budget where I've got to pay for these and pay for that, then every actor will get paid. Mm. But I pay for everything from my own pocket. So I can't pay you for you to come to get experience and exposure. I'm, that, that's not yeah, making yeah, any no. sense. Really true, you should be paying me. Now you're right, 100%. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's right, the yeah. way I see it, isn't it? Like, but at the same time, I still just bring people on just... F- to help them with their experience, you know what I'm trying to say to you, to to build their portfolios and stuff. I always want to know about this movie thing, mm. and I don't know nothing about. Bro, four three and a half months ago, I was asking my man, "How do you tag someone on Instagram?" <laughs> so I don't know in it, you know. Yeah, yeah. So always interest, but for me, it's like ah, I'm never gonna know about that. Mm. So just talking to you a little bit now, you know, like bro, I don't think you even understand how much information. I've just took from you for real. in my head, innit? Like that's good though. How this thing kind of works, you know what I mean? That's what I'm here for, my bro. That's yeah, what man. I'm here for, man. So man, you got anything to say before? Um no, man, I'm good, man. You got anyone to big up check. anything? Let's check out the last my, my last movie, Second Chance the movie. It's out now. Make sure you check that out. Oh, so you got first chance and second chance? Yeah, so Chance the Movie is part one, and obviously Second Chance is is part two, yeah. And when did you bring that out? Was well, Second Chance? Yeah. That came out two weeks ago. Oh, it came out after Takeover? Yeah. I watched Takeover about two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Takeover is the one before that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so so now you Second Chance is the, the latest one. My man's putting my son, some, man. My man's putting some serious work, you know. Yeah, 100%, That's good, man. though, man. I'm, I'm definitely going to check that out still, man. Thank you, my brother, man. Uh, it's really good talking to you. Um, guys, yeah. share, subscribe, and like. Hope you enjoy this podcast. We'll be back with another one soon. Peace.